Hey y'all, it's Rachel. I am trying to still get this phone to work. It's not, is it coming up crooked? If you guys hop on, let me know. We're trying to get it where it'll go landscape for me to record and then put it on YouTube where it's in the landscape mode, but it's not showing, it's doing what it did last night and coming up crooked like I'm on my side. So I see that there's people on. If you could comment and let me know if you see me crooked or if you see me to the side, because I'm trying to pull it up here on my tablet too and see if it will come up. Let's see here. It says live, hold on. See, it's showing me crooked again. Ugh, I don't know how to get this to, to stop. If anybody has any ideas, we unlocked the, um, I'll have to do this again this way. We unlocked it um, on the, thanks Maggie. Hey Linda. Hey Maggie. Um, we unlocked it on the, I guess the, one of the settings where you could keep it in portrait or landscape. And I thought maybe that was it. And it was showing me that it was fine once we unlocked that, that it would go in landscape mode. But it's not, every time we put it that way, it still looks like I'm okay in the phone, but it shows up crooked. So, hey Lisa, I don't know how to get it to show up in landscape mode. Hesfa is able to do that on her phone, but I don't know how to do it. I did ask in my business coaching group, um, and I haven't gotten a response back yet. So, hey Patty. Um, so we're trying to see if we're able to get that to show up. Who knows? But um, anyhow, tonight um, I went and I added some of the, just the um, Salty Kiss to the top here, uh, the, which is what we're blending into. This here, the lower part is the combination of the Monet's Garden and the Hey Sailor. And then um, that's blending into a, um, a mixture then of Hey Sailor, or um, Salty Kiss, and then the mixture, the combination that I made for down here, and then it goes into just the Salty Kiss. So this is the Salty Kiss and this mixture here, which is again the Monet's Garden and the Hey Sailor. So I need to blend this together because I have it on, but it's not blended where it's ombre where you can actually see the lines and everything. So tonight we're going to work on blending this together so that it's a seamless transition between the two. And then um, if we get into it tonight, I probably won't, but this will be the next step is the mint chip. And then I'll do something, I think, in the lighter color, like a, a yellowish green or something up here at the top and maybe hit some gold into the top of the piece up there when we get there. But tonight we're gonna work on blending this. That's why I added this here so we can see the steps as we go. I've got my stuff over here on my table so it's easier accessed by me because I've got so much stuff. So you might not see me completely uh, in the piece here because I'm opening up stuff. When I have my mixtures, I keep them in. I get these at Lowe's. I think they're like $2 for the bottom and $1.28 for the top. That way it keeps it sealed for me. Uh, Linda says, I'm technically challenged, so I can't help. <laughs> I know exactly how you feel. So, thank you, Patty. Me too. Um, anyhow, so... Um, I got this one is the um, let's see which mixture is which this one is the mixture of the um, salty kiss and the two combination mixture and then this is the bottom one that I mixed with the Monet's garden and um, the hay sailor so we're gonna mix this in here and we're gonna start blending between the two let's see if we can get me all right when I try and blend, I want to bring the uh, dark into the light and then the light into the dark. So it's got an even. This paint will reactivate as you get it wet, as long as you haven't sealed it at all. There we go. When you're blending and you're trying to create um, an ombre effect where it's going up, I know you guys can't see my face too. Let's see here. Let's see if we can get you better that way. 
Um, you want to, I like to go in the same direction, but blend up into the dark, into the light, and then I'll bring some of the light back down into the dark. And then before it dries, go across to blend it upwards. Like this, so that you get more of a, well, it's an even tone between the two, a graduated effect. At least this is how I do it. I'm sure that there's many other ways that are successful. But this is how I did it also for that piece that is the um, blue one in my shop that I get a lot of people asking me about, which is triggered part of this uh, live here and then doing this piece this way let's see here so what I did was I sprayed it a little bit with my water girl and then I added a little bit more of the mixtured paint which is the um, the one that is the common I guess we're gonna call it a uh, Pinsky blue because that's what Hesfa named it um, so we'll so that we're not getting confused but the Pinsky Blue, which is the Hay Sailor and the Monet's Garden mix, I added um, into this piece here with the Hay Sailor, but no, Salty Kiss, oh my gosh, I'm going to get so confused with all the names. Salty Kiss, I added a little bit of the Salty Kiss and the Pinsky Blue mixture together onto this once I started getting it wet and blending it up into each other. And I went across and then brought the dark into the light and then the light back down into the dark and then I went across like this so that the texture because I don't want to make a crosshatch pattern in this one for texture now if I wanted to do um, the crosshatch, pat crosshatch pattern for texture I would keep it going this way and this way back and forth hey Hespa I tried the at the beginning I don't know if you caught it the uh, we turned it and I took off the um, the lock on the where it was holding the landscape and the portrait uh, mode and it still was crooked and I couldn't get it to um, stay straight and it wouldn't let me choose the option for um, the recording thing whether it was 1080p, 4K or 480 and I think that that's why it's blurry um, on and the, the talking doesn't match up with the... Um, uh, video on when it when it went over to YouTube. I'm gonna go grab some of the um, uh, my Hesa or my uh, salty kiss here, and you're gonna see me do a no no, which is dipping into my paint into the um, actual paint can. The reason why we tell people not to do that is because you will contaminate it. I'm gonna go through this quickly, this, this smaller can here. You'll see me put a little bit of it on here and then bring this down into this other piece here, or the bottom section of it. And the reason why is because this paint literally has one quarter of a percent of preservative in it, which is very little because it is all natural and uh, higher when uh, it's manufactured it's got higher grades than the cosmetic industry does for manufacturing and the products in it and it can spoil when it gets contaminated and as having very little preservative in it that's why so that's why we say don't don't do what I did and dip your brush into the uh, can because it will contaminate it and now you can still use it um, it doesn't make it where it's not usable it doesn't render it not usable it just stinks um, like to me like fish like look um, like fish that's gone bad but you can still and but once it dries it doesn't smell anymore once it dries it doesn't smell anymore it just stinks while it's wet but to prevent that, you just don't do that. That's why we always say pour out 
um, a piece of or whatever you think you're going to use into it and don't ever pour back into it that's the same for our uh, big top and any of our patinas and stuff like that too pour it out and put it in a separate container even if you're going to mix something like um, our golden ticket in with the uh, big top to give it that shimmery effect on your uh, final coat um, you want to mix them together outside of the container and then dip into that so if you guys can see I'll bring my camera this way how that blended and now how it it goes up into this piece here I'm gonna let this dry here on this side and then I will still do another coat because I have this white which is really bright underneath it I don't want that to come through but I will let this dry and then put another second coat over the top of it and still blend it like that uh, going down we're gonna move over to this other side and do the same here and this will be let's see if I move you guys there we go um, now it's got some water spots on here because the water has sprayed and dripped on it which doesn't cause any damage or harm You'll just have to, you know, even it all back out again when uh, you're painting. This here is, we're going to work on the bottom of it. I'm re-wetting this because this will um, reactivate the paint for me. And that is, where did I stick that one? There it is. That one is blending a little bit of this, the original, the, as Hesfa calls it, Pinsky Blue for uh, our non-confusing me names, but I'm sure I'll still keep getting confused. That is very easy for me. But see how this is the easiest paint out of any paint I've ever used to blend colors with. You see how easy this goes on? I love this paint. How has everybody's day been and people's weather compared to uh, yesterday? Our weather today has been hot and muggy. It um, has rained a little bit here and there in some spots, but not too bad. There we go. And then I'm going to blend this up into the Salty Kiss and the Pinsky Blue uh, blend. And the reason why I use the water girl is because that helps it glide. See this? It's drying out here a little bit. So when you paint, I don't know if you can see the, I don't know if that'll tilt that way or not, but I don't know if it's easier to, we'll probably do it on the back side. But if you go here and you see how the, when you're painting here, it's not, you still have some streaks and it's not easy. It doesn't glide as easy. But if you re-wet it, it, it's much easier to blend and add paint and make it more seamless. So right now we're adding the mixture that is the um, Salty Kiss and the Pinsky Blue, what uh, Hesman named it. And if you are just tuning in, that is the Monet's Garden and the Hey Sailor mixture that I made for the bottom. I absolutely love this paint. I like the fact that I have a, a propane heater in my basement and you cannot paint with the fumes from a propane heater. Um, with regular paint and uh, you can with this paint because there's literally, it smells like dirt. I haven't tasted it yet, but Debbie Beard had a short that she did and a reel and uh, she tasted it and uh, it's that safe, not that you should taste it, but it is that safe and it will not harm you at all. 
to be able to do so. Does anybody have any questions? Lisa, you've been busy canning tomato sauce and green beans still? Oh my goodness. You must have, you were doing that yesterday too. When I talked to you. You must have a lot of them. We've got a lot of the cherry tomatoes that grew from last year. And um, that have come back. I've not done anything to them. I've not watered them at all this year. They're just in the garden. I haven't had time. It's just a little raised garden that I've got um, in the back that we put in when we bought this house. My son Nathan and I put it together. And uh, and I, drew, I grew garlic too this year for the first time. Um, well, I planted it last year. The lady that I got my Brittany from my very first Brittany, her name is Shelly, up in London, Ontario. And um, she has uh, a place called, it was Attaboy's Kennels for the Brittany's, but it is now Attaboy Garlic Farms. And uh, she uh, encouraged me and motivated me to try garlic for the first time. And it was so simple. I never knew how easy that would be to literally you just stick it in the ground and point up, roots down, and nothing. You do nothing to it, and it grew um, to one little clove, grew to a whole big clump in a year. You plant it in the fall, but I messed up and planted it in like June last year because I didn't know and pay any attention. But So I've got the bottom pretty much blended in together here. We're going to work on the sides here. In the back, let's see if I can get get you guys this way. Let's see here. Um, can you guys see this area pretty good right here? You'll be doing it Thursday too. Is that because Wednesday you're going to be with me in the shop? <laughs> um, Linda, you've been up since 3 a.m., worked in my shop until 1.30 this afternoon, went to supper, and we'll get back at it tomorrow. I am so excited to see everything you've got there when it's all done it will be amazing you have the most amazing stock for any craft you've got a crafter's dream a crafter's dream let me put that all there and i'm going to re-wet this here as i just did and i'm going to blend some of this together the up into the the dark here up into the light and the light down into the dark to try to soften that line a little bit. And then I will re-add some of that paint to it. Let me dip this in here and instead of respraying this whole section. There we go. And I need this color here. This is the blended mix between the top and the bottom here. There we go. To get rid of that line that I have there. Let me get my pointy sisters brush. Cause that is perfect for getting in the corners of everything. You see how well that gets in the corners? Literally it's meant it is meant for that. It is perfect. And then even around like details of things, it's great. She used, today it was a nightmare. Was it a nightmare because you had so much stuff to do? It says I'm going to try that technique one day. The blending up and down into each other, like the dark into the light and then the light into the dark. You could do that on those black nightstands that you had in, uh, in your storage room that you've got. Or in your uh, craft area. Let me catch this before I have a drip coming across. There we go. And those are one of the dogs. That one's Mudbug upstairs barking. I've got two German short hair pointers now. A mama and her son. And that is the sun barking. 
They will literally bark at the air. It doesn't have to be anything out there, and but they think it is. And they've got to bark. But you see how that blended up into it each other? And then I'm gonna use a little bit more of the Salty Kiss to lighten this top up here. and blend that down. Because I don't want the cross hatch patterns, I'm gonna keep going across to keep the lines in one direction. Just like that here. And then we're gonna do that here on this edge here get these going the same way I'm putting a little bit more of the salty kiss on the top here and I'm gonna blend that into the bottom here put a little bit more on the brush at the bottom here I'm gonna move this here I'm fixing the side here so that the lines are all the same from where I just did the front. Probably should have done the side and then the front and then moved it over to the other side, but I didn't. There we go. There we go. All right, now we're gonna work on the back section. Can you guys see this? I'm checking with my hand. Yeah, you guys can see that. I used to train German short hair pointers to hunt pheasant. We also trained for competition. Oh, how cool. Um, Callie is part of um, Carly's line that won in 2005. And um, she is, um, she, we, did, uh, we did confirmation with her for a little while. And then I moved up to Tennessee. And there's not a whole lot of, um, confirmation shows around here to um to do that with i mean you have to you know you'll either have to drive down to atlanta or um and that's where i got her health clearances in um atlanta um i did her cardiac and her ofa hips and elbows down in atlanta i did it at one of the um um king cavalier shows down there and uh, she did quite a bit of um, confirmation when we lived down that way, uh, when I was still in Mississippi. Um, she got some bread buys and, uh, and uh, best puppy when she was little. But she is old now. She is going to be 10. She's my old girl. And her son is going to be 5 next May. But I love that breed. That breed and Brittany's are like my favorites. How long have you... Uh, been involved with the short hairs, Patty. We're gonna stick my water bottle. Has anybody else ever tried any type of ombre technique here before? And if you have, what has worked for you guys to, to blend and bring it on up? I'm going to use this in the corner over here to blend this. I know you couldn't see that, but I'm trying to get this across here. The blend of the Penske Blue to the Hey Sailor. Oh, Salty Kiss. I keep wanting to call Salty Kiss Hey Sailor. I mean, they're two totally different colors. Thirty-five years. Oh my goodness! 
So you, I know, have some stories to tell about some short hairs. They think they're human. That's for sure. They're a great breed though. Very protective in a good way. Absolutely one of the best breeds. And I said, I'm, I'm a short hair and a Brittany nut. That's, but there we go. You see how, he, I mean, this just literally blends into each other. I did dip it back into the um, Salty Kiss here and I am running it across and going into this here, bringing the dark up into it. And then blending the dark, the light down into the dark. So then I can take it across. Because I don't want to do the texture of the cross hatch on this, on this piece. But if you did want to cross hatch for texture, that's how you do it is up and across. To build that up. When you do do that, it gives it really nice um, texture. Especially if you're going to use like a... Um, a colored wax to combine the two. Hey Barbara, thank you for joining us this evening. And I'm gonna add some more of the Salty Kiss up here and blend that across. But you see when I do that, it has made this line that I made when I did this so that I could show you guys how to blend the two where here you can see where you've got the different colors where it's definitely distinct between the two and once I re-wet it and I reconstitute the paint and bring it back then you can blend the two into each other and add some more paint where it gradually shows the uh, amount the change in colors let's see if I can get this here hold on Move my rolling chair all right, there we go. All right, I'm going to be adding, let me see here. I'm re-wetting this, the paint on the top had dried. And I'm getting this to run, get the runs off. All right, so you see how I've got the separated between the two. I'm gonna bring dark up and then I bring some of the light down and I'm going to add more so I can get it so it'll go across because I don't want the cross hatch pattern. This is that mixture between the two that I made here and again adding that water to the clay paint here just helps it glide and go that much easier onto your surface. I'm gonna bring it up into this here. And then I'm going to dip here. Don't do what I'm doing and dipping it into your paint as, as I was saying earlier, because it does contaminate it, but I will be going through that before that little bit of paint before it would be soured or contaminated the smell of it. But again, you can use it even once it's contaminated. It just is stinky until it dries. And I'm using my Klingon brushes, both my Short 30 and my Pointy Sisters 10, which is the smaller one of the two. There is a Pointy Sisters 14 and a Pointy Sisters 10. And 
and the 14 is just a little bit bigger. That's the only difference between the two of them. I'm gonna grab one of my other brushes here. I'm using my F30, the long handled one, to get some of this up because it was a little bit wet, a little wetter than what I wanted. And I got too much of the lighter salty kiss on it. So I'm gonna blend some of this back into it. And that's what I, one of the things I love about this paint is that you can't make a mistake. Even if you think you've made a mistake, there isn't an any amount that you can use again to just let it dry and start on over and blend it out. So it's, it's oops paint. You can't, you can't make a mistake with this DIY clay base paint. And this is, as I had said in previous lives, it is a true clay paint. Many paint products that say that they are clay based and there are some um got a hair there there are some um companies that want to try to create brand confusion and uh product confusion and our paint if somebody says something that they're clay based they can say that they're clay based paint and in a big old tub of it they may only have two tablespoons of clay in it so they can absolutely say that it's clay, just like we can. However, they usually won't tell you all the other ingredients that are in that clay paint because many times it's not all natural and they won't tell you the percentages of everything that's in it. And I don't know if it's on this one or not. I know it's on my bigger one. I'll let you guys, I'm gonna read what's on it. So in the uh, clay-based paint here, that is, this is why it's so heavy too. It is made from love, water, clay, porcelain clay, chalk, alcohol, ester as a binder, cellulose, pigments, and preservative. And the 16 ounce uh, can does 70 to 75 square foot and it's only 21.50. And you can, you can even thin it out, and because it's so heavily pigmented, when you thin it out, you can get even more coverage, and you don't lose the color because it's so heavily pigmented. Hey, Tammy. <clears throat> so, when you're using this, <clears throat> as I said, you can thin it out, and you won't lose the color. You'll still have that heavy, saturated pigment color. And we're not hiding any other ingredients that is only of that all of that product only one quarter of one percent is the actual preservative and that's it that's why it can get contaminated and get stinky if you're dipping your brush into it that has other things even dust on it on your brush from sitting there your brush could be brand new and clean but um the dust in it can contaminate it so um but as i said you can still use it it's just stinky and it'll stay stinky until it dries and then it's good. Even once you seal it, it won't, it won't be stinky again. But that's why, um, you know, ours is special. We have so many different colors. It's just, I love the paint. I, you can't go wrong with this paint. It is amazing. And it's so easy to work with. If you don't think that you can can paint or you are concerned about, you know, oh no, you couldn't do that. Cause I hear a lot of people say that they are worried about, well, I could never do that. That's, you know, that looks too hard. That's not something I can do. You absolutely can give it a try, give it a try. And you can always, if anybody ever had any questions, whether you buy something from me or not, you can always message me. I am always willing to help, no matter what, whether you get it from me or not. I want you to be successful and, you know, for you to feel success with what products and projects you make. And as I said, 
there's pieces too that I've painted and I thought, Meh, I don't know that I want to do that anymore. I don't know where I'm going with that. But then I come back and I can change it all up and change the color and change the whole bit, you know, because you can't go wrong with this. It's so easy. That's what you said. I always dip my brush in my containers and my paint always stinks. That's why, because it gets contaminated. You can still use the paint. It's not going to go bad, um, but it will stink until it dries. And it, even though once it's dried, your piece won't stink. Um, like, so if you, you know, when, you, when a customer purchases it, it won't stink, but um, it will, um, it will just be stinky why, it, why it's wet. And then you can seal it and it'll still be sealed in and it, it won't. It won't matter. Hey, Marilyn, how are you? Uh, it says, no one in my area sells DIY paint. What colors would you suggest starting with as I will have to ship? Um, I would start with your basic colors. The colors that you like, um, like if you like the greens and the blues, I would start with one or two of each, you know, a dark green and a light green, a dark green and a light blue, or a dark and a light of green and blue. And then maybe um, some of like a, like a, if you wanted a darker gray or a black and then um, a white, because then um, you can mix and lighten the greens and you can also darken the greens with a little bit of black. Um, do a couple of the primary colors too, if you wanted, if you wanted a variety, um, because if you start with all the primary colors, the three primary colors, the uh, red and yellow and blue, you can mix just about anything you want out of those colors and then do a white and a black because then you can darken it with the black a little bit. Um, or even if you did a dark blue, you can still darken it with the blue and the white. You can lighten it with whatever color you create from your primary colors. You can create and lighten it with the white by adding it. Just remember, whatever color you, you create as you're doing it, write your formula down. Um, on what you're doing even if you're just like taking your finger and dipping it into this is what I like to do here I save my trays from fast food or when we order food in and um, I use these a lot for and I'll put I'll put my finger in the paint and I'll put it here and then I'll take another color and I'll mix it there and see what I like and then I'll add more light or more dark to it just by my fingers to see if I like that color so I'm not wasting a whole lot of paint. And then if I like that, you know, whatever color I come up with, then I use the, like I actually measure it with a tablespoon or, you know, a cup or whatever, whatever amount I want of that color. And then I write that formula out on what I used. So like down here, I used um, a half a cup of the Monet's Garden to three quarters cup of Hey Sailor. And I did it in the quarter cup increments first. Um, so when I measured it out so that I will know if I have to go back and I use up all of that paint, that I have the exact amounts that I used so that I, if I have to touch it up or add more or whatever reason I would need more for, I would have the same color and it won't look funny um, having to have a completely different color. It won't look like I made an oops that it blends right in really well. But that's what I would do. I do ship if uh, you need somebody, if there isn't somebody close to you, I do ship. My website is stellarosboutique.co, but I will be happy to help you. Um, you can message me anytime. And I'm gonna start on this side here. I don't know if you guys can see that part here. I'm going to start here on this side here and work my way up and do the same thing blending wise. And I don't think this other side, the other side's not dry yet, but I am going on 40 minutes so far. So I try to keep it around 30 minutes or so, but I'm going to do the same technique here on this side where I'm going to blend the dark up into the light. And then, well, first I'm going to re, re wet it and then the dark up into the light and then the light back into the dark. And then I'm going to add a little bit more of the blended part or the blended mix and then blend that in and then down. And then I'm going to add some more of the light up at the top to blend that in. So we end up with a seamless ombre look that graduates up from the dark to the light. So if anybody has any questions, you can always message me at any time. 
um, at the Stella Rose Mercantile and Boutique page. Um, you can also shoot me a message if you'd like to on my uh, regular Rachel Pinsky Messenger from Facebook. I will answer both. And my website is stellaroseboutique.co. And I do have a shop here in Greenville, Tennessee at 524 Justice Drive in Greenville. That is the road that goes between Walgreens and where our old Weigels used to be, down by the hospital, by Laughlin. Well, it's not Laughlin. It's one of the ballads. I don't remember the name that they're calling it. I will always call it Laughlin. And then um, I've also got a smaller booth location in Sevierville at Violet Kingdom Boutique in Sevierville. That is behind Fuddruckers. So thank you guys for tuning in this evening. Tomorrow we will do the same time, 9 o'clock, um, here on my Facebook page. And uh, if you also would like to follow me, if you haven't followed me on my YouTube channel, that is also under Stella Rose Boutique. I will add that in the links. Um, in the comments, a link to that so you can follow me there. I will, I'm a, a few days behind. I got day one added on there today. And then uh, I will add day two tomorrow morning to uh, the YouTube page. But thank you so much. I will see you tomorrow, Lisa, too, at the shop and uh, on here in the evening. I'm excited. We are working in the shop and getting the back room. I will see you too, Patty, tomorrow. We've got so much stuff to do. Lisa's been amazing at my shop helping me get all kinds of stuff done. She's um, She's been a merchandiser for years for a major company, and um, she has retired from there and is just, uh, is just a blessing to have her in my life and in my shop. So, good night, Maggie. I will see you guys all tomorrow. You guys have a wonderful night. Thank you for watching. Bye, guys.